Hey my, we're back to the longer podcast. And would it be important? Would it be of interest? Would it be of value to be able to understand people better, to get a closer rapport, to just get a feel, an understanding, just know a little bit more about someone without asking them in person? Think of how that would affect your business, your life, your relationships, your everything. Just have that closer rapport by having that understanding. That's important. And I know that it is. Have a listen after this. Warning. 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 You are entering into the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. Clough. Too late. Personal Development Unplugged. Hey, my friend. Welcome back. Welcome back. And today, I I really want to just look into something. It's, well, here's a question to you. A question. Would you like to get an idea of what's going on in someone's mind? What they're thinking about? What they are experiencing or have experienced? Or get some knowledge of why they're reacting the way they react. Would that be important? To me, I think it's really important because, you know, we communicate with people so much. Yeah. Do we really know what's behind their communication to us? Think about it. Just think, just for a moment. How would relationships improve if you got to know this? And I'm not just thinking of that one-to-one special relationship. How do you think? Can you imagine different contexts where this would really improve your connections, your communication, and eventually, obviously, the outcome that you want? I've got loads in mind. I can think of, well, I know when I use this at work, colleagues around me, the bosses, managers, Clients, if you work in a service industry, we all serve, everyone is a client really when you think about it. Our friends, close friends, distant friends, the shopkeeper down the road, everybody. If you could have a better connection with them because you got a little idea of what's going on in their mind, wouldn't that be better? That was the pause <laughs> to get you to just. Hmm, I wonder, Cluffy, would it be better? I think it would. And I was reminded of this process we'll go through by, I was listening to um, a podcast with Anne Lamont in it. And I know her from the book Bird by Bird. And it's a book to help you writing, but it's not. But it is because it's so much more, it's so much deeper. If you get it, get it. Even if you don't want to write, it's such an interesting book because it has so many more things. Think, think of think of bird by bird, one thing at a time. This, it's such a deep book and it's such an easy read. Well, easy-ish, not too, yeah, yeah, it's an easy, easy-ish read. But it's interesting. And listening to her speak, she was speaking about how she wrote her fictional characters and how she really got to know how her characters were going to react to express themselves, which is quite weird if you think about it, because they're in her mind. They're her characters. Why, why wouldn't she know? But she said, I had to get really into them. And she got into her, her characters in a special way, in a way that we're thinking, or I'm thinking. You see, she would like go inside them, look through their own eyes. She'd see the world as if she was that character. And she would have those filters from the experiences that character has had in all their lives, their beliefs, their values, all the things we've talked about, the deletion, the distortion, the generalizations. And she would get to see how this character saw the world, how it listened to the world, how it would speak, that inner voice, even the tastes and smells, but then the feelings that this character had, especially as it was going through her book. She began to understood or understand their thoughts, their beliefs, their experiences, their emotions. 
and how they connected with other characters in her stories. And she'd do it with every character. And this is simply, well, it's an NLP process. That's all we do. One, one of the processes we do, and it's an awesome process. Perceptual positions. That's what it's called. But don't hang your hat on that one thing. What the hell is Cluffy talking about? Perceptual positions? I don't know. But no, think about this. This process can be used anywhere because I never thought about it at the time that you could use it for writing to understand a fictional character. And that's why her characters come to life. Walt Disney did it in so many different ways. Walt Disney is a, is a hero of mine for all the, th all the cartoons and all the, the imagineering he did. I don't know about the other stuff. Some people have a go at But hey, for me, he has created something special through his imagineering. And he used to use this similar type of imagineering to think about his business. Yeah, well, certainly he would do it. Obviously, he did it when he was doing the cartoons because he would get into the story and bringing, you know, cartoons to life on a screen. We, you know, I don't know about you, but when I used to watch the Walt Disney, I don't get little glimpses now with my grandchildren, but you would live that, that, that character's life, wouldn't you? You'd see it through their eyes. Whoa. But you see, and I think it was with Epcot, Disney needed money. He didn't have enough to, oh, who would have enough? They like buying the land, but then creating all that stuff and having designers and all that building and what a mind. But if you think about it, what an enterprise. How much money would it cost? And he needed to borrow, borrow the money with a business plan and all that stuff. And of course, you don't just walk up to... Uh, the bank manager, and say, by the way, I'd like to create this weird place that has different countries around a, a big lake, and we're going to have different experiences. And the bank manager would obviously say, what a wonderful idea, because I've got your same desire to do that. Now, they, they, they look at the money, don't they? So what Walt Disney would do with his brother, they would reenact, or not reenact, they would act out prior to seeing the bank manager as if one of them were the bank manager. So they'd go into his body, as it were. Imagine him sitting behind the desk. His brother would go in, sit there, and they would talk as if he was a bank manager, and he would become the bank manager, looking through those the eyes, the experiences, the filters, and they'd go through different ways of, of trying to persuade to get more money. And then they'd swap Disney would do it, and the brother would do it the other way around. So they both got so many different ideas. Now, when you think about it, I think that must have worked. Because, have you been to Epcot? I know I have. I've been there two or three times, and all the rest. I just fall in love with the place. So envious of you, uh, you Americans, because <laughs> you, you can go there and be there. Anyway, that's me, me aside. But it's the same NLP process. Now, I've got so many examples, so many examples. I want to give you a couple now. Now then, I don't know how many examples I'm going to show you, give you, because there is so many. I mean, my very, very, very first training, it was in hypnosis. It wasn't even NLP, but we, NLP processes go everywhere. And this comes from a different type of, uh, a different, it, well, it was extracted and, and modeled from from uh, a different type of process, but it didn't matter. It was like changing chairs. And I, well, the exercise we had, the drill, as they call it, we had to, um, two of us would get together and one would be the practitioner and one would be the client. And the client would then, having an issue with somebody, they'd, they'd imagine there would be an empty chair in front of you. And you'd imagine talking to that person you've got that issue with. And you'd imagine them sitting there and listening to you. And then you'd get up and you'd go and sit in their chair and become them. And I thought, what a load of old rubbish this is. This is crazy. I'm not going to get anything out of this. So, but you do what you do. You have to give you 100%. I set my intention. and I didn't know I was doing it then, but I did it. And I just went for it. And I expressed myself honestly to this imagined person in front of me. Real in my mind, because they were a real person in my life. And then I got up thinking, well, I wonder what's going to happen here. And when I sat down, it was like, well, it's sort of magical. 
because I took on as if I was them. And when I listened to my voice coming at me from where I used to be as them, I didn't hear it the same way as I thought I said it. And then as them, I expressed an answer to them. And when I got back into me again, I thought, whoa, this is, this is blowing my mind. Because I'm getting information that they're not bloody there in front of me, but I'm getting some information. And I, we did this for about 15 minutes, being guided by the other pr practitioner. I did it for, for her as well. We did the same thing. A different, obviously, a person in their life, her life. But when I went back, my relationship was different. Because it was if I understood what they were feeling, what they were going through. Now, I don't know if I really, really did, because obviously it's inside me. But something happened and it was different. I can remember a really awesome thing. Well, I used to do um, training in NLP. Still do it a little bit, but not quite so much now. But when I was deep into it, I was running a practice group back in Cambridge, Cambridge in the UK. And once a month... We get some practitioners together just to practice NLP and hypnosis. And we got there. And I said, what would you like to practice? So I've got some things in mind. And this woman put her hand up and says, I don't know about this practice, Paul, but I'm having a real problem with my daughter. We're not communicating. We're not doing, we're having arguments all the time. And I get so cross and it gets worse and she gets cross. And we just, ah. Uh. And I said, well, we've got a process for that. Let's do it in front of... There was only half a dozen of us there. Let's do it together in front of the other four, if that's okay. I said, yeah, well, anything to get a better connection, you know, better relationship with my daughter. She's my daughter, for God's sake. So I had her stand in one place on the floor, looking at this other place where she decided she, her daughter would be standing, and she expressed her concerns, what she wanted to say to her daughter. Then I had her move over to the space where she saw her daughter. And then she looked back. She reheard what she'd said as a mum. But she was her daughter now. And then she got something from it. And, and as the daughter expressed something back, and again, went backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. And then what we did was we said, well, let's go to a meta position, which is part of the process. A possession, uh, a possession, a position that as if you're looking down upon those two people, you and that other person, to get another insight. And the weird thing was, we said, well, why don't we do it properly? So we got a table, and we got a chair and put it on top of the table, and she climbed up all the way, and I was holding her hand, and I said, look at those two people talking. Listen to them, and notice, what advice could you give both of them? And she said, I don't know why, but I'm going to, this has come to mind. She said that advice, and then helped her down off the chair, off the table, and then we go, go back through her daughter to just understand that advice, and then back to her. So it's a bit like collecting everyone up. And she said, oh, I feel so much better. But hey, is that the answer? I feel better? I said, well, let's, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Now, she came back, and she said, I can't believe it, Paul. I was with my daughter, and I, we were sitting there, and I said, come and sit on the settee. That's, I call it a settee. You know, the lounge, your seat, the big, the big long thing you sit on in the front room. And we sat there and I just expressed what I'd learned in that practice group. And it was if, like magic, my daughter said, that's exactly how I'm feeling. And she expressed more. And it was a little bit like we'd done, but it was more richer. If you can get more richer, it was richer. And she said, we had a wonderful conversation. We connected. We got to understand each other. There was no shouting. It was awesome. In fact, we took this a little bit weirder in our master prac. This is a master prac for NLP. We would get people, one person, to think of an issue in their life. And they would take on a posture. Now, it wasn't a posture that was so obvious that you knew what they were doing, but they would go into a posture that would remind them of that issue. And then we'd get one of the practitioners to try to mirror exactly what that, that, that physical posture was. And some of the other practitioners would come around and move them just a little bit so they 
were basically identical in their postures. And then we asked the person who had been modelled, or not the model, the modelee, I think, the person who did, did it anyway, the other practitioner said, what was your experience? And they'd say, well, I don't know why, but I'm feeling I'm doing this, this and this. And the person who was being modelled said, how did you get that? That's exactly right. And nine times out of ten, they were really, really close just by being the same or in the same physical stature, as it were, position. Isn't that weird? They weren't in the same place, but they modelled the, the physical thing. And in fact, that reminds me when I went on my trainer's training, there were people who wanted to study the trainer because he was a great man, still is. And Robert Diltz is his name. If you ever get a chance and you're a NLP master prac and you want to do something, go and see him. He's brilliant. But some of the trainers there would go to the back of the room and actually follow his physical movements as they listened because they wanted to get a better idea of how he was thinking, what was his filters. And they felt they learned more that way. I've got so many more stories. I'll give you one last one. This is weird. This, is, this was a weird one. Sort of weird anyway. Don't want to freak you out. But <laughs> I was pretty new at this at the time. And a friend of a friend of a friend sort of said, can you have a chat with this woman? Because she's having real problems with her husband. I said, okay, well, relationships, we can do that. And she came and saw me. And I said, what do you want? She said, well, I really have some I have this problem with my husband. I said, okay, well, have you tried talking to him? She said, well, it's a bit difficult, Paul, because he's dead. Oh, I thought, oh, what? He's dead? And she said, yeah, but, and I dream about him, and he shouts at me, and he's abusive, and things like that. I said, well, he's dead. She said, yeah, but it's still there. So, this is weird, and it wasn't like a seance thing. I said, just imagine him sitting there in front of you, and you're in a good, comfortable place. So just go and sit in and be him. First of all, ask him what you want. Say, you know, you're, I need to let you go or something like that. What she said, she said, well, you know, you're coming into my mind. I, I just need to move on. And then she would sit in his place. And I said, oh, you know, how do you feel about your wife moving on? And she said, as him, voice didn't change, by the way, so he wasn't channeling or anything like that. She said, I want you to say something nice about me. So she came back and I said, you know, obviously you just said, he said, you want to hear something nice about himself? And she says, well, I can't say anything nice about him at all. I really despise the man. So she <laughs> went back with the force and basically he was not going to go from her mind, in her mind, until she said something nice. I said, surely there was something, one thing. You married, married the bugger. There must have been something about him. He's <laughs> and this is the weird part. She said, well, he did do the washing up nicely. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm laughing, but I laughed then. And I know I shouldn't, but I just laughed. And I said, well, tell him that. And she said, OK, you did the washing up very nicely. Thank you. And I said, what happened? And guess what? She said, he disappeared. He's gone. And do you know what? It was. He disappeared from a dream, a mind in that way. In the horrible way. Now, can you explain that? But it's another relationship. Sometimes, I don't know where that came from, but it was just, well, it was crazy. But you can see there's so many different ways you can play with this process and get great results. But I did it in, in other ways. I'll give you one more example. Um, and this is when I used to do it in my business. I would do phone calls because I used to get get the introductions, as it were. If I got through an introduction using my, my skills as rapport and things like that, I know I could get my, my colleague in and he was awesome at doing the job, but we just need to get through the door. So I would imagine, a bit like Walt Disney, I'd go in the garden and I'd imagine saying to that person what I want to say. Then I'd move across in the garden to look back at me as if I was receiving the phone call. And I'd get this and I'd get that and go backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. And just occasionally, you know, that would, that would create a good rapport. So, and that's just a bit like a practice drill, I guess. But I was feeling it. But just occasionally, one, one, one memory comes to mind when I was trying to get in touch with somebody. 
and they were really off, off with me. And that they know they weren't that. And I said, okay, I don't know what his name is. I know it wasn't David, but we'll call him David. I said, David, I just feel there's something, something different about you today. Because I, in my mind, I'd gone backwards and forwards in, in, as if I was sitting in here, the other end of the phone while we were talking. I said, I just don't, didn't feel right. And he suddenly just stopped, paused, and said, oh, Paul, he said, I'm really, really sorry. He said, but my wife's not very well. We, well, it wasn't a good, pro, you know, a good, good telephone call last night from the doctors, and I'm not feeling the best. He said, but you, you know, don't tell anybody. I haven't told anyone. I don't know how you got it, but don't tell anyone. And do you know what? He said, look, leave it. Just forget about me. Nothing more to do than look after yourself, David. And do you know what? He phoned me up the next day and said, oh, I'm so sorry that I was, you know, short with you. And thank you for your kindness. And I thought, well, that, that, to me, that wasn't kindness. It was just being there. And he said, no, you were the only one who picked up on it. And I thank you so much. And it gave me, because what I did was I went home, talked to my wife, and we sorted it. We sorted the things we need to do. We saw what we're going to have to do in the future. And we feel so much different. Thank you so much. And I thought, whoa. And this was a long time ago. And I, this is part of that process, I guess. So there are tons and tons of uh, experiences that I have with this, and I got more, but I'm not going to bore you with them all. But aren't they so wonderful? Now, there's only one caveat, and I'm going to say there's a caveat to this, because if you're going to do this type of thing where you're going to imagine that you're a different person, the person you want to connect with better, there's one thing just make sure they're mentally okay, you know, sane, you know, because. If you go into somebody as if you were, imagining you were, you don't want to pick up anything that isn't right, isn't safe. You know, the people I do it with, I know that they're a sound mind, as it were, and all I want to do is make a better connection with them. I just want to understand them better. So I very rarely do it with people I don't know. But just in case, I always like to give you the... Uh, it's like, it was always explained to me as if it was like a... Um, if you are climbing, it's that safety rope. You have a safety line. And you always say just before, before you do this type of thing, you can just ask your unconscious mind to keep you safe and only to learn the things that you need to learn and nothing more. And it's so rare, by the way. It is so rare. So I don't want to put it out of your mind, but it's, I'm duty bound to tell you. But it's, if it's just with your friends and you know them or your, your wife, your partner, your colleagues at work, sometimes it's just it's just a great thing to do. Having said that, I think what I'm going to do, because I was going to give you more examples, but I think I want to do that on another, another training, another training, another, another episode, because this is all about learning from people of the people you don't know, but the people you want to know that you haven't even met, maybe. So I'm going to do that again. But I did this and I got great advice from people. People I didn't know, but they gave me advice. That's weird, isn't it? I wonder if that'd be of interest to you. And it's the same blessed principle, same process. You know, it's things like before making that call, getting advice from people, things like that. But anyway, would you like to learn this? Would you like to learn the how? Because I'm not that type of person who would just say, oh, this is awesome, awesome, awesome. And then nothing. Because the process is called perceptual positions. We've talked about it before, but if you're new here, then you haven't heard it before. And if you have heard it before, sometimes it's just so good to get, get it repeated, because I'll repeat it in a different way than I explained it the first time, the second time, the third time. I'll always probably explain it slightly differently. And because you've learned something, you will see it and hear it differently. You'll learn it even more. It'll be more richer. <laughs> anyway, first position, the first position out of three. First position is looking through your own eyes. That's where you are right now. Listening through your own ears. Looking through your own eyes, being you. The first position, numero uno. Then we have a second position. That second position is 
as if you were looking through the eyes of another. Okay? Some people, well, you're looking through the eyes of another. So, I don't know if, you know, as I said, that, that mum and daughter. First position, she was looking through her own eyes at her daughter, imagining her daughter in front of her. The second position was she would walk over and imagine she is her daughter, looking through her daughter's eyes back at her. The second position. And the third position is what we call a meta view. Meta position. And that's as if you were floating above. You can float to the... I, I do it different, different ways. I can float to the side, the back to the front, but generally... It's above and looking down, getting a great view. And because of that, because it's a meta position and you're not looking through your eyes, you're not looking through anybody else's eyes, you are dissociated. And at this dissociated level, at right out here, you get a different understanding because you haven't got any emotional ties down there. And if you did, you can just go to a level above that or a level above that. So you get a real dissociated view so you can learn dispassionately, like a director. Looking at it dispassionately, you're not emotionally tied to anything there. And what you do, you move between first and second, second and first, first and second, second and first, until you get some type of understanding. And then you'd float all the way up to third position, meta view, take a, take a good look at that conversation or what's, what's happening. Give some advice the advice that you get from that. Give it to both. And then it's like, as I said before, wrapping it all together. You come from that meta position all the way down into that second position, that other person, collect them up and bring it back into you. So you're back into you. And the thing about it is when you, you obviously got to come back to you because that's who you bloody are. And then you can sit down, maybe get your puzzle book out. I do think with a puzzle book, you make notes about this thing. Puzzle book, journal, you name it, whatever you want. Make some notes what you learnt, because they may not be totally, the learnings might not be totally apparent to you straight away. They might not be that clear, because sometimes they just need to germinate a little bit. And then you come back to it. You look at your puzzle book, your journal, what you made these notes, you go, oh, I get it now. And the thing about this is, if, there's, if you're going to do this process, and if there's no one there, the freaky stuff is just talk out loud. You know, you talk out like I'm talking to you now and then go to that other person, maybe on the other end of the phone, that like, client, why is that client acting this way? And you go into your client as if you were the client looking back at you and you get things that way. But talk out loud if you can. No one gives a monk, well, they don't know what you're doing anyway. They just look, you just look a bit weird. And hey, Weird is good. Weird is good. I mean, let, let's look at that example of that mum. The mum and the daughter. What did I do? I got her to look at that. Imagine looking at her daughter. Asking her daughter how she felt, how she was feeling, how she was coming across. Her mum would say, look, you're coming across as if you're um, very aggressive. And I, the, what's, how do you feel that way? How are you coming across that way? What is it inside you that's doing that? And she maybe hear a little bit of a reply. But then I'd get her to walk into that position, look back at where she was standing and imagine looking at herself. And I'd generally repeat what she'd said from position number one and then let her reply, imagining that she's her. So she would say, I'm feeling this way, mum, that type of thing. And then it would just go backwards and forwards. One to two, two to one, one to two, two to one. Until you get to the point where you go, I've got, I've got an idea what this is about. But, and there's a little bit of but, I'm emotionally invested here. I'm associated. Associated in my position, associated in their position. Let me imagine floating higher. Or if you can't float higher, like climbing up on a table or a chair and have someone hold you, what you can do is just imagine a different position to where those two are standing, maybe just to the side, and walk over there. And imagine looking at the two spaces on the floor where you previously occupied the, yourself and the other person, or the mum and the daughter. I got her to stand high, but she, was, she could have stood beside her or beside them. And imagine replaying those, that conversation. You could do it really quickly because you get those insights really quickly. And just ask yourself, what advice would I give these two people? 
And sometimes you think, and some of that advice, by the way, is so simple, so common sense. But when we're in it, you know, we're, when we're in the jar, we don't read the label. And when they're in the jar, they're not reading the label. And common sense is not that common. And you get it. But then all you've got to do is come back into position number two and back to position number one and just be you. Oh, you've got to do it. You've got to do it. Because you'll find that you learn so much. If, even if you think about it, if you just learn one thing, one thing about that person that allowed you to get a better connection, to get a better outcome, isn't it worth doing this? This process takes, I don't know, five minutes? Take longer, but it doesn't need to. Get someone to help you if you wanted to, but you know, if you if you know an NLP practitioner, they'll probably understand this and do it with you, but you don't need that. If you really want to know uh, and listen to, I've done a couple of processes on this. You can go all the way back to hashtag 62, reflecting and understanding perceptual positions. Hey, as a title, Paul. And if you go to the hypnosis tracks and you go to 62.1, you'll get the hypnosis of reflecting and understanding perceptual positions. So you're just reinforcing this. Or if you go further back than that, I think it was a hashtag five to the fifth episode. And it says, not a hypnosis track, take a different perspective. And they both have, well, that, if you go to the hypnosis tracks again and look for hashtag 5.1, you'll get the hypnosis track of that. Everything is here. And you can say, well, you've repeated yourself, Paul, but repetition is a mother of skill. And were you around on the fifth episode? Were you around on the 62nd episode? This is going to be 200 and God knows what. So 200 more. And it's good to re-remember me explaining this to you, however badly, is going to help me learn it even more better, even more richer. So... Do look at those. How do you get them, Paul? How do you get them? You should know, but if you don't know, because you're new, go to paulcloughonline.com forward slash podcast. Sign up. You get all 50 plus, I think. There's about 55. Well, there's over 50 anyway. Hypnosis and uh, NLP processes there. All different subjects. Just do think you, when you find one, just have a listen to the, the um, episode of the same number just to get a you know, a deeper understanding of it and understand why the hypnosis. But hey, it's your choice. You play. But you don't pay anything for it other than paying it forward by, by sharing this. But you get, you know, when you do that, you also get a newsletter once, well, roughly once a month, just letting you know what's gone on, what's coming on. Maybe a little video on YouTube. There's videos on YouTube now for the, there's only about five or 10 minute video, just me explaining one more little thing, what I'm thinking about. So do that. That'd be awesome. And it, it doesn't take time, as I said. It just takes as little time or as much time as you want to. But it can save so much time on emotional upheaval. You just imagine what it saved for that mum and daughter. Being able to reconcile and get their, you know, their relationship to be where the loving relationship that they wanted, but they just couldn't say it to each other. Think about that woman who was having nightmares, being, and this was, she was being like, not haunted, but she had those, those thoughts day and night to be free. And it took 15, 20 minutes. And the thing about it is, I know what's going to happen. You can, do, you can probably do it the first time and you go, oh, this is so difficult. It's clunky. Well, how many times have you done it? The first time you do everything will be clunky. Because a little while ago, you didn't know anything about this. That's unconscious incompetence. And then you find out you, you didn't know anything about it, and now you're consciously aware that you don't. Conscious incompetence. But then it gets that clunky thing, you do it. And you get conscious competence in it. You just clunk your way through, just a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, until it becomes unconsciously competent. And that means you just tend to do this. And what happens is it becomes, to, becomes a habit that you can, as you're going through things, you do this very quickly in your mind. You don't necessarily do it as a process. Yes, you can do with, with bigger issues, but somehow you just get a better understanding of people. I don't know. It's, like, it's not mind reading, but it's just, you just feel like you get a, 
It's a closer way or a better way of getting rapport, I think. And it becomes natural. All you have to do, the two important things you do. First one, so important. Set your intention. What are you looking to get out of this? I want to get a better understanding, maybe, of this person. I want to get a better connection. I want to find a way to get better rapport. Once you do that, the second most important thing is just do it. Just do the bloody thing. And the third one is, out of the two, is make a note of the answers you get. And if you need some help on this, because if I haven't been clear, and you think this is really good, but, oh, what about this, Paul? Could you do it for that? Email me. If you need some help, just let me know. Feedback at personaldevelopmentunplugged.com. Send it to me. I know that if you do that, there'll be other people who want to do that. And if you're one of those other people, you do it too, because it'll be different as well. And then we'll all do this. I know there's more to this. I know there's more to this. Some people might even say that this, Paul, is a little bit simple. It's a little bit simple. Not easy, but it's a little bit simple. Well, there's only one answer to that. Well, there's two, actually. Old, old Albie Einstein got it. In simplicity, there's genius. Don't make things too simple, but don't overcomplicate them. And that's what a lot of people do. This is where, where I'm here with you, breaking down that complicated into simple steps that you get such a return on your investment. Not too simple that you miss out the richness. But the thing is, it's, not e it's easy, but it's not easy because it takes effort. It really does. And I can't remember what the second one was. Because <laughs> I lost my mind there. Anyway, let me know. As I said, feedback at personaldevelopmentunplugged.com. So you can let me know the feedback. Do you like this conversational style? I'm doing it slightly different today. Standing up, which is quite weird, which gets me to move. Could you notice that? As you think back now, did you notice? Maybe there's a bit more liveliness in it. I don't know. I feel more alive in it. Let me know, please. I love your feedback. Am I going too fast? Am I going too slow? I know I have gaps. It's the way I speak. I try to get it better. But let me know. It's just a conversation. Everything will be anonymous. And that email... As I said, every time, there's no other bugger here that gets it, only me. So you get that personal reply from me. And I'll be so grateful for you. So I'm so grateful for your time because I know that we're sharing this conversation. I'm growing through this and I'm hopefully helping you grow too. So we keep on this, I was going to say expedition, but it's like an adventure, but it's an expedition too, isn't it? And we're not quite sure what we're going to find, but we know it's going to be interesting. Let's get curious, see where it's all going to go. Think of any other subjects you like. Subjects that you feel that we could dive deeper into. And don't think, please, please don't think this. Oh, they're too simple. They're too silly. No, nothing is. I've just gone, gone through this in simplicity. There's genius. And sometimes it's the bleeding obvious that we need to explore. The hiding in plain sight that becomes visible, that will spur us on awesome let me know how you enjoyed this if you would and if you would as usual please share this episode tell everyone about the unplugged personal development podcast and well if you think of anything you want let me know remember if you're feeling anxious and you want more confidence do go to paulcloughonline.com as i say every time got a lovely program there and because if you're a member of the uh hypnosis tracks and the and the newsletter you get a massive dis discount yeah it seems too cheap but hey this is me it's my gift as it were to you keep it as low as i can just for you because you listened because your time's valuable and you're valuable and whatever you think you are you're more than that and very very lastly because you're going to pay it forward that's that's the price you pay by the way paying this forward to as many people as you can Paying it forward by giving me that critique. Paying it forward by letting me know what you like more of. And one more thing. Now your conscious mind, you can go elsewhere for a moment. Because I want to speak to your unconscious mind. Because I want you to, well, just surprise their conscious mind even more. More than you did yesterday, the day before that. But surprise their conscious mind for feeling happy just for no reason at all. Do that now and tomorrow and the next day. Happy for no reason. 
And we're back to your conscious mind. You can forget all about that and just let it happen. Until the next time, my friends, it's time to fly. Ta-da! Warning, you are now leaving the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. It's time to fly on your own. Be brave, my friend. Personal Development Unplugged.